Well, hello, this is Oliver again, and this is vlog number 15 in our series, Living with People from Another Culture. And this, I think, is very critical uh, as our churches move forward. Many years ago, um, McGavran came up um, with a principle for missions while he worked in India, which was called the Homogeneous Unit Principle. And this purports that people accept or receive Christ without having to cross ethnic barriers. And I refute that because we live in a different world uh, today. We live in a, in a world that is uh, where cultures uh, merge together and we all around us in our communities no longer is we are, are we living with people of only one culture but we live with people of different cultures what are we going to do about it one of the passages i find in the bible uh, that is 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 we ought to attend to is that we ought to love god and love our neighbor as we love God or as we love ourselves. So I want to uh, entitle this vlog number 15, A Theology of Discomfort. The more I reflect on the, these two commandments, the more I realize that they are really inseparable. They are two sides of the same coin. To love someone who is outside my comfort zone, someone I would not naturally be attracted to, is actually loving God. Jesus says, if you love the least of these, you have loved me. Then there's 1 John, where the Apostle John, who um, was fittingly called John the Beloved, he writes, that if you can't love people who you can see, how can you love God whom you can't see? Whoever loves God has to love his brother also. So if this interpretation of this second greatest commandment is true, what does it mean for the way we do church today? Could it not be that we are only reaching people of our own culture? What would we have to change if we would include people who don't look like us? What does it mean for how we measure success, say? Well, <laughs> it changes everything. Welcome to a theology of discomfort. Is it really possible that we in the church are called to be radically different in how we think about and act toward those the Bible would def define as our neighbors, even at the cost of losing members? Whenever a church decides to reach people of a different culture, you're going to lose members. There are going to be people in the church who are not comfortable with people of another culture. What if we became arithmet arithmetically smaller, yet stronger, because of the wild eyes zealots who embrace the life that Jesus did, a life that is frequently about discomfort, a life that is about a radical view of who our neighbor really is. Someone of a different culture who you may really hate. If any word epitomizes Jesus' life, it is discomfort from the beginning. His birth amid poverty, in a bed of straw, into a 
hostile world to the end his death by the Via Della Rosa full of shame sacrifice humility pain betrayal and finally rejection embracing a life of discomfort means venturing into places we don't feel like going and doing things that we really don't wish to do being with people we don't feel comfortable being with serving them loving them helping them all of which demonstrates a not of this world brand of love that is irresistible to all people in all places if we do these sorts of things in our churches we generally relegate them to to missions or outreach in a in a, a, a Caucasian church that they would say at least once a year they invite a black choir to come in or or, or, or we invite some disadvantaged youth who sing to our church you know uh, this this is 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 really um, not what we the way we need to do to do church it, it needs not to be a, a once in a lifetime way of embracing people of a different culture we must change the way we that because if we're honest it, it tends to be to be the extent of our comfort zone in the world we live in now the single best thing a church can be doing today is contrary to this homogeneous unit principle it means rallying behind kingdom values and vision rather than on skin color and socio-economic status it means recognizing that we are called to wrestle with deeper questions are we spending time and pouring our lives out for people who make us uncomfortable here's the reality if we really want to see our churches grow in the way Jesus wants us to grow, if we really want to see Christ revealed in our communities that surround us and through our lives in this global world of ours, then we must focus our strategic initiatives of love on people who make us feel uncomfortable, who don't fit into our thinking and our conventions who are marginalized and even considered misfits and outsiders brothers and sisters when 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 the world sees the church willing to forego size and scale to love and embrace people who are not like us treating them as neighbors they can sense an expression of true and genuine love. It's a thing of, mir of miraculous beauty and people know beauty when they see it. Of what the, the, the beauty that, uh, has, that the church must demonstrate. Anyone can love people like themselves. The Father's love, however, is best reflected and is most irresistible and potent when we love those who are unattractive, <laughs> unattractive to us, unlike us, other cultures, not necessarily reaching only our culture. We live in a different world. So when we make that our priority, people outside the church start to see God in God's fullness but when we allow our churches to be mostly homogeneous we tend to do things that are comfortable to us but I suggest that we ought to move into this theology of discomfort we focus on conceiving and executing programs and events that attract more people just like us which often is 
more Christians looking for another church that meets their needs. The gospel is about so much more, isn't it? The soul of the Great Commission and the Great Commandment leans into difficult people with their complexities. It's to be the essence of who we are as Christians. In fact, unity of mind and generosity of spirit in the midst of diversity is the distinguishing mark of true Christian community. It's a bold, radical endeavor to love our neighbor. But it's the endeavor God has called us to do, however. It's where the gospel becomes real. It really speaks of the power of Jesus. The concept, this theology of discomfort I, I, uh, is, is, is what we find in the Bible if we, if we are to look through it. Throughout the Old Testament, we hear that we are to be to radically love outsiders, widows, orphans, to act as the voice for the voiceless, to be a father to the fatherless. In Corinthians, we see God saying that God focuses on the weak of this world to speak to the mighty. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, Jesus explains to the disciples that obeying him and loving the least of these in society give us deep understanding about him in his ways. Last week on our program, WOW, on Wednesday, we looked into the life of the Ethiopian eunuch. In Acts 8, there's an odd but revealing story of involving this Ethiopian eunuch. At first, you might wonder about the meaning of this story, this black man. But I think it speaks beautifully of the theology of discomfort, especially as it pertains to misfits and outcasts. If anyone ranked as a misfit, or outcast in the first century church, it would be this Ethiopian eunuch. Eunuchs had access to the powerful and the privileged because kings and emperors weren't worried about them messing around with their wives and their, their, their harems. But nobody reaped more scorn and ridicule than eunuchs. The elite in society likened eunuchs to a dry root, someone who had been cut off from the main branches of society. A eunuch didn't merit recognition or acknowledgement and certainly not much respect or attention. In the Acts 8 account, the Ethiopian eunuch had gone to Jerusalem, <laughs> listen, to find God. But when he got to the temple, he wasn't allowed by the priest because Deuteronomy bars all eunuchs from the temple. So the eunuch heads back to his country. On his way, he's broken. He's physically and spiritually cut off. But what does God do? God sends Philip the deacon to tell the eunuch there's another one who also has been cut off, who also has been rejected, and his name is Jesus. And the Ethiopian eunuch basically says in disbelief, you mean that there is someone like me? Philip goes on to tell him about this Jesus Christ. We today in our world have got to embrace a theology of discomfort. We've got to reach out into our neighborhoods and touch the lives of people who are not like us. We must in convert our services 
to be much more inclusive of other cultures reaching people who are unlike us. This has been blog number 15. I trust that it will challenge you. It will stretch you to be much more than reaching people who look like you. But if we are going to be a church that is really the, the picture of who Christ is or what the kingdom is, we've got to become uncomfortable. Fundamentally because we are reaching people who are like us. God bless you and see you on Sunday.